Hi everybody, once again, I'm Butch Stearns here at the Health IT Summit 2012. I'm with Stephen Dugan from Dmetrics. Stephen, thanks for stopping by. No problem, thanks for having me. Uh, tell us about Dmetrics. Tell us the history of the company, tell us what you do. So Dmetrics is actually uh, based on some technology which was developed at uh, MIT's uh, C-Cell, Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Um, our two co-founders, uh, Paul Nemirovsky and Ariadna Cotoni, uh, sort of leading uh, experts in machine learning and natural language processing. So we basically uh, developed technology over a series of five to six years and in 2009 we were, uh, sort of decided to spin out the technology into commercial operation. Um, the technology is built to analyze natural language in healthcare um, and we are focusing our technology on analyzing millions of treatment decisions made by millions of patients. Um, we handle sort of uh, open uh, sort of internet data. We take previously conducted research from um, sort of different healthcare organizations, yeah. compile lots of data together and understand how well treatments are doing in the real world. And make sense of it all. Absolutely, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of mess out there, so we, <laughs> we kind of uh, weave about, our way through talk it. Talk a little bit more about analyzing natural language in the industry. So, I mean, you know, natural language is uh, sort of, a, it's very complex, uh, you know. Uh, we handle data sets where we sort of look at a disease area. Mm -hmm. So we may look at um, arthritis or osteoporosis, mm -hmm. and in, in that data set, we'll maybe have 15-year-olds who are talking about their treatment experience, and then you'll maybe have an 80-year-old talking about their treatment experience, all talking in very different ways. Um, but uh, frankly, they're expressing the same thing. So you've got 10, 20, 30, 100, sometimes infinite amount of ways in which different people talk about the same thing. So we essentially build algorithms to understand all the different ways that people are referring to the same thing and train our models on lots of natural language that comes from a variety of different patients. So I think the space has got a long way to go. There's a lot of unanswered questions there. Um, but yeah, natural language is a, a very interesting space. To now play. you've been in health for a long time mm -hmm. uh, and talk about uh, what did you get valuable out of this conference? I mean, this conference is designed to put thought leaders together mm -hmm. in a room together for a couple of days to talk about solutions, to talk about the issues. Sure. Uh, it was an eye opener for me in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. but I imagine you come to events like these and you learn as much as you provide, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, I think the you know the reason why I'm here uh, or is not because I'm uh, you know a genius on meaningful use stage <laughs> two or I really understand you know where the policy may be going but I've come from a sort of sort of the the bottom up uh, with from patient uh, communities yeah. and st running them and managing data that have come from those types of social networks and here there are experts in the space of managing these large panels uh, la managing these large um, um, sort of health infrastructure so, and software companies. And I think the best thing that I've got out of this is that there's a real marrying of the two. There's a marrying of the kind of uh, the new technologies coming through and the established IBMs and uh, sort of the big right. brands that are out there. And I think this is a great platform for people to sort of combine and really have that discussion. I've so. asked everybody that sat here today this question, so I want to ask it to you also, is when you think about data, when you think about the infrastructure, when you think about process, mm -hmm. and all the issues and challenges and opportunities that go around all of that, when you're working with a client, where do you begin fundamentally? Do you, I mean, everybody's answered this question a little mm -hmm. differently. I'm curious how you answer it. Well, you know, dealing in the business of, of researching what people are talking about, we often get so much, uh, okay, well, tell me what they're discussing and it's uh, very general questions we get so we just try and pick away at what their real core needs are what their informational needs are right now for the particular product or group that they're part of so our main focus is to really pick at the questions that they're asking and, and, pr and provide solutions yeah absolutely i mean you know we we try not to, we're try not to take this general approach and we yeah. decide to spend more time actually analyzing what the core problems are focus on that and I know it's a very general answer to give but no 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 it's a good answer because it's specific to the clients absolutely is what you're saying absolutely and then we, we we actually you know we can't answer all of the problems right. that a client has but what we can do is we can find that bridge between the technology offering that we have and um, you know the needs that they're sort of so expressing. let me give you another general question as we wrap up okay um, when you think about electronic medical records and you think about the issues surrounding health there's there's so many different things that involve that privacy issues who should have access to the data mm -hmm. if i had to ask you your stand mm -hmm. on on personal records mm -hmm. should the patient own them i, I think the, the question is the patients really need to own them uh and i think it's actually you know 
this is why Google Health failed. I don't think you should be giving patients all of their data or, you know, what value are they going to get out of it? So I think to answer the question, yes, I think patients should own their own data, but what value does that really right. have to the patient? And I think it's more uh, what can you do with the data is the more important question. How can you interpret a patient's healthcare record? And, you know, I believe the, the question of ownership is asked often, you know, too much. And I've more focused on what can you do with that data to uh, drive research forward and, and it's improve a, it's health outcomes. It's a very outcomes. interesting perspective because when you think about it, that's, that is the surface debate with people. Yeah, we should own our data. Well, what are you going to do with it? Mm. It's when true. you get it, right? It's true. And, you know, I, I don't mind if uh, people know what my CRP levels are. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if do they... You? <laughs> yeah, 1.4. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... Um, I think, frankly, uh, uh, I think the healthcare community in general needs to really focus on what are the real questions that we need to be asking to really push the space forward because, you know, there's a lot of problems which we need to address which we aren't actually focusing on right now. So. Stephen, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, creating some content with us. Uh, good, continued success with Thank Dmetrics. You. Thank I'm you. Butch Stearns. He's Stephen uh, Guggen of Dugan, excuse me. <laughs> Stephen Dugan do. of we'll Dmetrics. Uh, and this has been our coverage, part of our coverage of Health IT 2012.